The prayers of our loved ones are wonderful, but it's even more assuring to know that even before going to the cross, Jesus prayed not only for his disciples, but for those who would believe based on their witness. Here's today's keep in mind verse, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. John chapter 17, verse 21. Consider the story of a village chief in Malawi, Africa, as a civil leader, which in that context also made him a spiritual leader of his community, he believed that his success as a leader would depend on his people's sense of being united. When there were fights among the villagers, he was usually discouraged, feeling that he had failed at his task of leading the community. To restore unity whenever fights erupted in the village, he reminded the striving villagers that life is much bigger than what they were fighting about, and that their community was even larger than the 500 people that actually lived in the village. In his understanding, the community included the spiritual reality of God's presence in the village, and that of the ancestors, the strangers, all humanity regardless of distance from his village, and even future generations of people connected to the village. As such, leadership for him was a spiritual exercise, and the unity that he considered the measure of his success was a spiritual phenomenon. He believed that the unity he desired for his community was only possible with God's help. Consequently, he prayed for this unity every time he said a prayer, every time and everywhere. He prayed for unity when he prayed over a meal, or for a sick person, even when he buried the dead. And praying for unity for his disciples, Jesus set the example for him and for all of us today in John chapter 17. In his prayer, Jesus reveals further that the disciples were given to him by the Father. Thus, the disciples were God's gift to Jesus and a means through which Jesus would be glorified. D.A. Carson observes that Christians often think of Jesus as God's gift to us. We rarely think of ourselves. As God's gift to Jesus. It should encourage the believers of our day that both Christ and the Spirit have continued to intercede for us. In addition, God expects us to intercede for one another. In interceding for his disciples, Jesus sets a good example of spiritual leadership. Leading God's people ought to be first achieved in prayer. Leaders must pray for their followers. Jesus prayed for the protection of his disciples from disunity and from the evil one. He prays that they would be one or united in the same way as he and the Father. Jesus is showing us here that there are issues in life that teaching and counseling will not resolve without the help of prayer. Even though all disciples belong to Christ and to the Father and are therefore covered and protected in this never-changing relationship with God, Praying for them was still very necessary. This small community of believers would be persecuted in the world, but Jesus does not wish them to be spared from the hostility that was sourced in the evil one, which is another name for Satan. He only asks the Father to protect them from the evil one through the power of the Father's name, just as he had taught them to pray, Deliver us from the evil one. Here's our lesson. The text from today's lesson is considered by biblical scholars to be the real Lord's Prayer, as we see the passion of Christ in prayer for all of us. As we look at our world today, we see division and strife. This is the opposite of what Jesus prayed for his disciples. Many in the same church are at odds with each other over trivial matters and don't exhibit the oneness that Christ desired as he prayed this prayer to the Father. We as believers have a mandate from God to strive for unity and to seek the unity of our neighborhoods and communities as well. God has shown us his love through the sending of his Son to die for us. As the church, we must reflect this love by maintaining our relationship with him and extending this great love out to others. Christ laid the sure foundation for us to be one with the Father by faith, and this oneness is to be manifested in our relationships with other believers. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.